Hello guys and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be episode 2 of the Mirage Zero to Hero series. This episode will be going over uh, the takeoff procedures and the landing procedures. So let's get into it. If you want to follow along, we're going to go caucus and take off. See you there. One. Hey guys, what's going on? So we're in an instant action. Uh, so you started right about here. I just moved up and got off the runway into this taxi area. Alright, so let's talk about uh, taxiing. So, before we get into it, let's go over some controls. If you don't have rudder pedals, by default, uh, your left rudder will be Z on keyboard and X. If you don't have nozzle steering binded, by default it's N. And then if you don't have wheel brakes binded, by default it's W on the keyboard. Alright, so those are out of the way. Let's go into it. Alright, so when you taxi in, a, in any plane, nozzle steering will be how you steer the plane. So obviously nothing's happening right. Ooh, it's JK. Alright, so that's that's fine. Alright, so nose with steering is uh, being used by your rudder pedals. So when you use your rudder pedals while you have nose with steering turned on, you also notice in the back that your rudder is moving. When you disable your nose with steering, now it's just your rudder. Uh, the manual states that when you take off at uh, 80 knots that you should take uh, nose and steering off because you have sufficient airflow over the, uh, the rudder that you should be able to see your plane uh, while you're taking off accordingly to the manual though. Alright, so now we got that covered. Let's go over this panel down here. So this panel down here is going to indicate to you that you have your nose steering, your wheel brakes, your landing gears down. So these three green lights right now, this indicates that you have your landing gears down. Uh, when they go up, they'll go away. Your wheel brake is going to be indicated uh, by this yellow light. Your nose with steering will be indicated over here by this blue light. Your air brakes. Alright, also when you take off, I always just leave this down in air to ground mode. That way you don't have that many G's going. So when you're in air-to-air -air mode, your plane is more reactive and pulls more G's. This is makes it a little bit uh, less sensitive. All right, so is taxi. Actually, before we do taxi, uh, notice that the Mirage has a, a decently wide wheelbase for a fighter, unlike an F-16 or an F-18, which wheelbase will be right by this hand line. So you really don't have to worry about uh, tipping your plane if you have a lot of weight on, for example. All right, so let's start taxiing. Give it some throttle. That way you get rolling and you get back off the throttle. Alright, so taxi speed according to the manual is going to be uh, no more than 20 knots. But up here, you see there's no speed indicator. Once you reach 30 knots, it will pop up. So that's how that's what I go off of. Because if you go more than 30 knots, your plane is not going to turn that well. If you stay below 30 knots, you make sharp turns. Also, if you're carrying a lot of weight, your plane might lean a little bit, so just be cautious of that, cautious of that as well. And also, if you have a lot of weight, uh, your wheel brakes are going to be a little bit more weaker since you have more uh, inertia. Tapping a wheel brake. Alright, so let's line up for takeoff. Alright, this is uh, personal preference to you guys. So, like I said before, the manual states that you get just full send it until you get 80 knots and take your nose with steering off. Uh, I just line up and then I disable my nose with steering. Alright, let's talk about some HUD symbology real quick. Alright, so down here, I like to visualize this as a rear view of your plane. So you got your wings right here and your rudder. So what this is uh, symbolizing is that when you take off and you start rotating by pulling back on the stick, that your plane is obviously going to go nose up. You want to keep this symbology below the horizon line. That way you avoid a tail strike. You notice the engine and the rear wheels are pretty far apart from each other. So when you start rotating, 
the engine is going to generally uh, be closer to the ground. So if you keep that below, you're going to have less of a tail strike, or less chances of a tail strike, sorry. Alright, then right here in this box, this is going to be your G's. Uh, once we take off, you're going to see this arrow pop up about right here. Uh, this is indicating that you need to get your nose up because you're getting low to the ground. Um, so the manual wants you to also go full afterburner and then stay in burner until you get to 300 knots. Then also your landing gear, you want to have it up before 260 uh, because it's going to start beeping at you and it's going to get annoying. Alright, so let's take off. Uh, full burner, wheel brakes down. Nose of steering is not on. Afterburner lights on. Release and wheel brakes. All right, there's 80 knots. Now I should be able to uh, make corrections with my rudder. I like to rotate about 150, 160. Okay, rotating, keeping that below, and we're up. Nose where nose will up or nose <laughs> landing gears up. Sorry, there's a beeping. All right, now we're just going to bring it back around and we're going to do a couple landing approaches. We're going to do what you see most common on any multiplayer server, which is a visual approach. We're going to do it twice. We're going to do do it how no, most people do it uh, the first time, which is says landing by eye, and then we'll do an assistance landing, and we'll go into Mission Editor, and we'll do ILS tagging landing, which is uh, the synthetic runway where your plane can land itself on autopilot pretty much. This is under the pattern. When I come back, I'm going to be landing on runway 12. All right, good enough. We're going to idle, so you the plane to lead energy with the turn. gear down. Alright, so in the Mirage you want to land with the nose up authority, so about 14 AOA. And the way you know you have that is achieved by right here. So those green marks is 14 AOA, which is your landing approach. So this is how most people land the Mirage on like multiplayer servers. Let's keep the flight path marker on the end of the runway. Better artillery on that might help, huh? We're not, we're not gonna stop, we're gonna just do a touch and go. There's an aerial telling us that we need to pull up because we're landing. a little bit of wind. Touch and go, or take off. Many gears up. And we're gonna come back around. Hello. That's the wing mini have if you didn't turn off your radio and turn mine off. It's probably yelling at rejoin right now. Rejoin, rejoin. Rejoin. Yep. Alright, so this next landing is going to be another visual landing, but we're going to use uh, a little bit of assistance. There you go. So this is a cut in. Uh, my newborn started crying, so I'm just redoing this uh, part without the baby crying in the background. I figured it would be better uh, quality other than having a baby cry. So line up, slow down. All right, PC 
CA pin are going to hit app, which is short for approach. Or if you notice, now your speed, your heading tape, and your altitude are lower. That's because if you raise your seat up, it'll be all right here. But since I sit down here, it says it looks like it's in the middle. You got these carrots down here. You want your, sh or sorry, you got this bracket. You want your accelerometer chevron, or carrots, chevrons, whatever you want to call them. In those brackets to give you the uh, optimal landing speed approach. Alright, so the H number going down that you see is pretty much your plane's altimeter saying, hey, you got this many feet till your wheels down. 14 OA. Reason is like really jumping on this mission. Wheels down, power back, wheel brake, uh, drag shoot, pull that back, drag shoot, to cut the string right there, then proceed the taxi. Alright, that's it. So the next one will be uh, going to Mission Editor. We'll be doing our iOS attack and landing. See you there. Alright guys, so this is uh, part three. This is going to be landing with your iOS attack hand. Uh, and this is the cool synthetic runaway stuff. So let's get into the situation. So we're roughly, let's pause right now. About 40 miles out from Sanaki. Alright, so a lot of the runaways in DCS have ILS, but some of them don't, even though they all have ILS beacons. Uh, Sanaki does have ILS integrated, so we could use this runaway. Uh, since we're doing this on Mission Editor, uh, we're going to do it all raw. Uh, so I have to input all the coordinates for us uh, so you can understand how to do it. Then I'm going to show you on Mission Editor if the guy knows what they're doing. Uh, they can set it up that way. You don't even have to enter any inputs. You just go to approach a certain waypoint, and that's all you have to do. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. That way you could get some practice in if you want to do it that way. All right. Since we're looking at Sanaki, we're going to get the information we can from it real quick. All right. So it's 43 degrees. You got this coordinates right here, uh, or sorry, 43 feet. Uh, Tac and 31 X-ray. We're going to use runway 09 which is iOS 108.90. So let's enter that in our plane right now. Scrolling with my mouse wheel. All right, when you use uh, the iOS, make sure you're an M. Tac in, so you 31. Same thing, mouse wheel. And then you're going to be on X-ray, not Yankee. So X-ray, transmit, receive. Over here to HSI for an attack hand mode. Alright, now we actually need to enter our grid coordinates. This is not it. So we're going to go north, 421419, enter. We're going to go to our easting, uh, which is going to be 42, but with easting you always have to do zero first. 42, uh, zero 03, 39, enter. Altitude 43 feet, which is already there. All right, so RHDS, what this is, it's your runaway heading and glide slope. We're going to get that real quick. We're just going to zoom in on F10. We're running or landing at runaway 09. Get a marker. I was just tracing these lines. It's going to be 094 degrees for the heading. So enter, runaway heading 094. Ooh, clear. 094. I know it's 0.6 because I've done this before. Enter. Uh, glide slope. Uh, standard is 30 degrees. So 0, 0, 3, 0. Enter. Alright, so now we did all that information. Now we have to do our magic slave AG designate and INS position update so the plane knows that we're updated. Alright, now we're going to go to approach. 
Now we have uh, symbology on our HUD. This dashed line right here is the localizer deviation line, or sorry, uh, deviation bar. Pretty much all it is is going to walk us into, uh, or guide us into the uh, runway. You have this little box right here, is uh, the localizer symbol. You can pretty much put your flight path marker in that box and it'll just guide you there. What's cool about the Mirage, you go on autopilot, you go into approach mode, the Mirage will fly itself to the runway if you have all the information. Uh, like I said, the Mirage will fly itself. All you have to do is make sure that you're controlling the throttle. We're going to fast forward until we get a little bit closer. closer all right so right now what you see this is uh, there's a runway right there but as we get closer just gonna line up this is your th synthetic runway uh, all right the uh, magic slave and the INS update button also gives you different symbology so right now this is your glide slope if you want to view your runway you can right here so now throttle a little bit Nine miles out. Uh, trying to look for visual markers. You don't see me, but I'll show you what they are when they pop up. All right, so I claim that the plane can land itself in autopilot, so we're gonna let the, we're gonna see the plane could do it. Normally, I don't let it do it, but I'm not into my word, so we'll, we'll see if it, the Mirage proves me wrong. All right, that's what I'm looking for. So right there's a marker. which are these things right here. So when we fly over it, the Mirage is going to flash an M, and that's what they are. It's lying down to two, no, less than 300. We get about 260 for that uh, landing gear, so it doesn't beep at us. Back up on the throttle. Landing gear down. All right. The plane's going to start uh, putting itself in the AOA. There's that marker right there, so soon we're going to have that end flashing. There's the M right now, pausing. There it is. So we're flying within uh, its beam. And then there's one more up ahead. Right there. Plane's at 14 LA. Again, it's flying itself. I'm just torn to throttle. Going over that marker. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm not even touching the stick. <laughs> mm. Backing up on throttle. All right, it's beeping at me. Turn off uh, autopilot. That was plane doing its own thing. Alright, parachute out. Alright, now I'm going to go to Mission Editor. I'm going to show you exactly how to uh, place the markers so you don't have to do uh, the coordinates or input the coordinates. Alright guys, so this is the mission we just did. Alright, so if you want to do this yourself and replicate it, all you have to do is put your plane wherever you want to go. Choose Naki. Uh, your waypoint, put it to landing. So now uh, your plane's computer, INS computer, has all the information. That way you don't have to enter the coordinates like I did. All right. Enjoy, guys. See you on the next episode.